Welcome to another edition of TechCast. Our guest today is Haitham El Khatib, co-founder and CRO at Unify Apps. Welcome, Haitham. Nice to be here. It's a privilege to have you here. Tell us something about Unify Apps and the company and what it does. Yes. So at Unify Apps, what we believe that, uh, you know, this AI wave that's taking over everything um, is really similar to what happened 30 years ago with the web. Right. Um, and in the web, uh, companies had two choices. You know, they right. had to either rebuild their systems to make them web ready, or they had to basically bolt in web capabilities. And we saw over the, the, the next 30 years that companies that basically became digital native right. and rebuilt their applications uh, for the web were the ones that really benefited the most. Right. The same thing is going to happen now, in our uh, opinion, and companies need to become AI native. Right. And uh, we are trying to help companies become AI native. Right. We believe uh, to be to be able to become AI native, companies really have to think about AI across the organization. Mm. And they really have to think about connecting systems and data, mm. orchestrating workflows, reimagining business processes, and then building agents on top of that. And right. so we build a platform to help companies do that. Absolutely. Now, we're now moving from predictive AI to agentic AI, systems that can reason, plan, and act autonomously. How do you see the shift redefining the enterprise technology stack? And what new mental models do leaders need to adopt to thrive in this era? Yes, that's, that's a great question. So as I was saying, I think there are two routes to take um, in, in this AI era. You can think of AI as an iteration right. uh, where you just kind of add some AI capabilities on the fringes of your technology stack. Right. Or you can you know, become AI native and basically embed the AI across your whole technology right. stack. Right. Right? And I think this is, this is very, very important that mm. um, organizations need to think of AI as a, an opportunity to reimagine right. their business processes. So mm. to innovate versus iterate mm -hmm. and uh, that reimagining of the business process is very important because with AI mm -hmm. you can really uh, reap the benefits of the mm -hmm. capabilities uh, if you really think of it end to end mm -hmm. in terms of reimagining business processes. Absolutely. Now for years digital transformation meant moving to the cloud or automating workflows. In the age of intelligent agents what does digital transformation mean now? Are we entering a phase where transformation becomes continuous and self-optimizing? Yeah, so we are getting into the um, uh, intelligent transformation mm -hmm. uh, era. Um, and in the intelligent transformation era, we really have to think about basically what does that mean? So uh, really what it means is we, we have to start by understanding that we have an opportunity to capture mm. all of the intelligence that we have in the organization, right? right. Mm. Um, and so we need to think about systems of record. Right. We have to think about systems of activity mm. and we have to think about systems of knowledge. Now mm. that the last one is the most trickiest right. because the knowledge actually sits, some of it is captured, some of it is non-captured, mm. right? Mm. You know, I mean, when you think about a great um, uh, 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 sort of uh, 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 worker or employee that you have, you know, or a colleague, you know that a lot of the, the the capability actually sometimes sits in the in in their heads, right? Absolutely. And so, being able to, I think, capture the knowledge, um, and also obviously the unstructured knowledge across scattered across the organizations, right. Right. Um, is the first step to basically trying to basically create that intelligence, and then basically um, utilizing it to create these new reimagined business processes to make the organization more intelligent. Absolutely. Uh, that's a good uh, point. We'll come back to that. Uh, now, as agents become capable of, or AI agents become capable of decision making and orchestration, how should we rethink the relationship between humans and machines in business contexts? Do you envision a future where employees manage AI agents the way they manage teams? Yes. I mean, uh, I think it, uh, it would be a really naive to think that, you know, business mm -hmm. processes will be run completely by AI agents. Right whether it's in large organizations mm -hmm. or companies or governments, um, there is this concept of human in the loop that will right, al always right. be there, mm -hmm. right? That's why in our platform, in the Unify Apps platform, we believe that the business process will be a combination of deterministic and predictive uh, um, uh, uh, um, steps. Right. Uh, and that's why you need both orchestration mm -hmm. and autonomous AI agents doing the work. And so right. when you have that combination, what you can do is you can allow 
the agents to do a lot of the repetitive work right. um, that you really don't want to humans to be doing. Right. A lot of the human intensive, mm. labor intensive mm. work. Mm. But then also have that capability um, uh, to do the human check, mm. to work uh, uh, with with obviously humans to to basically validate that work uh, and 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 approve it and move forward with the business process. Right. So AI doesn't completely eliminate humans. Abs unlike no, what actually, uh, absolutely not. Is. Um, yeah. You know, AI actually creates an opportunity for for creating efficiency and creating more uh, uh, opportunities for revenue and, and more opportunities for um, uh, creating real-time insights right. that are going to help the organization and help the employees. Absolutely. Now, um, with autonomous systems taking on more operational responsibility, how do we maintain human oversight, trust and alignment? What principles of governance framework should guide the deployment of Agentic AI within large yes. organizations? So this is this is a, a big topic um, that um, we have built into our architecture of our platform. Right. Uh, because again, as you mentioned, it mm. is something that is uh, at the top of mind of large organizations and governments, and which are really the uh, target and addressable market for right. uh, for our platform. And so the way we we think about this really is embedding into our platform three really important things. Hmm. The first first one being the observability. Right. You need to really observe with yeah. transparency what the agent is doing. So un step by step, you know, understand mm -hmm. that. The second thing is the auditability. Mm -hmm. So being able to audit what right. an agent is actually doing. Mm -hmm. The third one, which is really important, is guardrails. Right. So setting the right guardrails of what the agents can see and what they can do right. and the, the example i like to think about that is again when you onboard an, a new employee let's say um you know you're onboarding someone in 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 in, in sales right, right? Mm. uh well when you you know hire and onboard the, the the new employee you give them access to specific systems right, right? you don't right. get the salesperson mm. access to the hr right. system right, right? right. um same thing apply with agents. You have mm. to create these guardrails mm. to ensure that the agents are not hallucinating. They're not providing the wrong mm. information. They don't have access to the wrong information. So observability, auditability, and guardrails. That's an interesting point. You have to make sure that the agents who are capable of doing things don't make mistakes. I mean, like, yes. the, the, it works both ways, actually. Exactly, exactly. That's, that's actually very interesting. Now, um, automation has historically been about efficiency. Agentic AI seems to aim for creativity and adaptability, though. Uh, what does that evolution mean for industries still in their AI journey? And what's your vision for a truly first AI enterprise? Yes. Uh, again, I think like I started, I mean, an AI native or mm -hmm. AI first organization um, really embeds AI across the whole organization. Right. So in every department mm -hmm. and um, across every, you know, layer of the organization, right? right. right? So... It becomes native uh, to the organization. It is used in, you know, most decision making. Right. It's used in every business process, mm. right? So, um, so this is how we think about an AI first organization. Uh, it it uses AI to innovate, as I mentioned, um, you know, doing business. Mm. Um, and so, uh, for us, I mean, there is a huge amount of benefit right. uh, when you actually take that route of becoming an AI native organization right. because, you know, some of the, the, the benefits obviously that, um, you know, well, the first one is obviously the opportunity to reimagine your mm -hmm. business process, mm -hmm. right? If you've been doing an HR onboarding process for the last 30 years in a specific way, you have an opportunity now to basically reimagine that just as an example, right. or whether it's invoice processing or finance accounts receivable, or even claims processing and ensure any process. Right. I think the second big area as well is you really with AI, um, you can really almost completely eliminate the the repetitive and laborious, you know, uh, uh, business process. Right. And you'll be surprised that mm -hmm. in 2025 and after 30 years of mm -hmm. digital transformation, right. there are so many, so many uh, manual and labor intensive processes across companies, uh, mm -hmm. across all industries. Mm -hmm. Right. The third big, big area is, um, as I mentioned earlier, being able to get these real-time insights, mm. uh, 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 you know, to make decisions much, much faster, right? right? right. Um, so, and again, something you would think 
Hmm. That after after thirty years, digital transformation is there, but it's actually not. Right. Uh, and the reason is again is because of you know we build a lot of systems. There's a lot of mm-hmm. silos mm-hmm. across organization, and uh, and so AI can give you that opportunity to basically be able to make these decisions faster. Hmm. The last area is also a very uh, important area, is the ability to uh, launch products and systems and applications. Right. Hmm eight times faster, 10 times faster, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So the project that used to take 18 months, 24 months to launch, you know, whether it's an internal system that you're launching or whatever, yeah, right. now mm-hmm. you can literally do it in two months. Mm-hmm. So I think these are these are um, the key areas that we are seeing organizations getting the, a lot of benefits with uh, with with AI. Absolutely. Now this is, this I know is a, nobody has a, fixed answer to this, but just a general question. Based on your experience, where do you see AI like say 10 years from now or 15 years from now, where do you see it all <laughs> heading? I don't think anybody can answer that exactly. question. But uh, just just uh, in your, uh, you know, based on your experience. Yeah. I think, I, I mean, if again, the best probably extrapolation would be the web. Mm. I think that, uh, again, I'm an older guy. I graduated in 97. So the internet was still coming up uh, in, in 97. And what I saw then and what I think will happen now mm. is AI is going to be an opportunity to basically create a lot of new ways of doing things. Right. And that means that it is going to create a uh, a, a lot of new companies, mm. right? And just like the digital age, you know, and we had the rise of companies like Uber and Amazon and Google and these amazing companies that made mm. our lives obviously easy. Who would have thought right. that you can get a delivery in, in 12 hours, you know, uh, just by doing a couple of clicks on a phone, right? Really? Um, it was crazy to think mm. that. So I think, I mean, I can't give you a specific answer, but I am very positive about the opportunity to, you know, make life easier, mm. give back time mm. to humans, you know, for us to be able to do other things and be able to basically, um, you know, create opportunities, new opportunities, new jobs, new ways of doing things. Again, Uber drivers never existed until Uber was there and right. and that created a, a whole industry. Mm. So I think there will be new industries coming up. There will be new ways of doing work. There will be new ways of uh, 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 basically getting services and uh, and that should be positive across the board. Absolutely. So exciting, unpredictable and full of potential. That's how I would... Absolutely. Yeah, like, Absolutely. That's the fine. That was such an insightful conversation. So many learnings. Thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you.